Hi everyone, welcome to Filming With Your Phone, Part 1, Settings. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be going over what settings to use on your phone to get the best possible image quality. Now, some of the things that I'm going to be discussing apply to filming in general, not just phones, but all filming devices. And we're also going to go over a few apps that you can use to help improve your video quality. Disclaimer, it doesn't matter what phone you have, as long as it can take pictures and record video, as well as download apps. So, let's get into it. Most phones have amazing apps built in that allow you manual control of your device. So with Samsung or Android, which is what I use, I select the camera app, and then I scroll to more, select Pro Video, and then I turn it horizontally, and I can adjust all my settings from there. For iPhone users, you can go into Settings, Camera, and there you can adjust your resolution and frame rate. For the other features, you just go into the camera app and adjust them from there. And that's pretty much the same for most mobile devices. Now, let's go outside and get some shots, and we'll take you through what settings you should be using. So here we are, I'm setting up a shot, and the first thing I'm doing is changing the resolution. So for most filming purposes, you want to use the highest resolution settings available for the highest image quality. For me, that's 8K. Sometimes you might not be shooting in 8K, and the reason being is those file sizes are really large. So if you're constantly shooting in 8K, you're very quickly going to run out of storage space, and it's also going to be more difficult for you to edit that footage because the file sizes are larger. The other thing is if you're shooting slow motion, you might film in 4K or even HD because higher resolution formats don't necessarily support slow motion. And lastly, if you film in 8K, Sometimes, on a lot of phones, including mine, it punches in into the image, so it crops in on the image. That's something to think about if you want to get a wide shot. Perhaps you're filming 4K or HD as opposed to 8K, just to avoid that crop factor. Next is frames per second, and you want to be shooting at 24 frames per second for most filming. This is a standard cinema format that most things you watch are filmed in. FPS, or frames per second, means that you're recording 24 frames a second, or 24 still images, which when played back looks like a video, because video is essentially just loads of images taken in quick succession, creating the illusion of a moving picture. If you're filming sport or slow motion, you'll need to film in 50 frames a second or more. Double the frames means that you can slow down your video and play it back smoothly without it missing a frame. In this example, I'm filming at 120 frames a second and I've slowed it down to 25%. Notice that no frames are skipping or being dropped. Whereas in this example, I filmed at 24 frames a second and slowed it down to 50%. You can see it kind of skipping a frame each at a time. That's why you need to be shooting at least double the frames per second for slow motion. Next is shutter speed. So shutter speed or exposure time is the length of time when the film or digital sensor inside the camera is exposed to light. The quicker the shutter speed, the less light is let in. The longer the shutter speed, the more light is let in. As you can see, I'm using a very high shutter speed and the reason being is it's extremely bright where I'm filming. This allows less light in so I can see my image. If I was to shoot at a lower shutter speed, then the whole image will be blown out. When shooting at night, you'll have to use a lower shutter speed in order to let in more light. However, if it's too low, you're going to get a lot of motion blur. A general rule of thumb is the shutter speed should be double whatever the frame rate is. So 24 frames a second equals roughly 1 of shutter speed. If you're filming an action scene or sports scene, you might want to film with a higher shutter speed as well because a higher shutter speed also equals less motion blur. Use a higher shutter speed to capture fast moving action and this can also add intensity to your films. Next is ISO. ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. The higher you put it, the brighter your image will be. But this is done digitally, which means the higher you crank your ISO, the lower your image quality will be. Try to film at the lowest ISO possible to ensure you have optimal image quality. White balance. White balance is a camera setting that adjusts the color balance of the light you're shooting in so that it appears a neutral white. It's important to make sure your white balance is correct before filming so that the colors are accurate. You can do this by adjusting white balance or WB in your camera and scroll between the different settings available. Your white balance should be at the color temperature of the scene that you're filming. 9000 to 10,000 is heavy cloud cover. 8000 is shade. 7000 to 7500 is cool white. 6500 to 7500 is cloudy or overcast. 5000 to 6000 is daylight. 5000 to 5500 is midday. 4500 is white LEDs, 
4000 to 4500 is natural white or metal halides, 4100 is moonlight, 3000 is halogen lights, 2800 to 3000 is sunrise or golden hour, 2700 to 3000 is warm light or halogen incandescent lights, 2200 is high pressure sodium lamps, and 1900 is candle light. You can use the auto white balance if you want to, but I strongly recommend locking the white balance so that it doesn't change when you're filming. Lastly, aperture, which refers to the opening of a lens's diaphragm through which light passes. This applies to cameras with lenses which can be adjusted to either let in more or less light. The wider or more open the aperture is, the more the light comes in, meaning the brighter the image is and the shallower the depth of field, meaning less things are in focus. The higher the aperture, the less light is let in and the less shallow the depth of field is, meaning more things appear in focus. This doesn't actually apply to filmmaking with your phone as your phone doesn't have lenses which you can adjust the aperture to let in more or less light. However, you can adjust the exposure levels to let in more light. This however is done digitally, which means the higher you crank it, the lower your image quality will be. If your phone doesn't allow you access to manual control features for filming, then I recommend downloading an app that unlocks your phone's hidden features so you can record video. If you're an iPhone user, then I recommend Pro Camera by Moment. Otherwise, if like me, you're an Android user, then I strongly recommend Open Camera. This free app will allow you to control your white balance, exposure, give you manual focus, ISO, camera lens or focal length, various recording formats, resolutions, frame rates and codecs, color effects and picture profiles, grids and focus peaking, audio control and tons more. It's the best free app that I've come across and if your phone isn't allowing you full manual control over its video functions, this might be the best app for you to use. I'm just going to go through some features so you all know how to use this app. There are so many but we're just going to go through ones that I think are absolutely necessary. So once you've downloaded the app, open it up, click the settings cog which is usually in the top left hand corner of the screen. To make sure you have access to all the features, scroll down to camera API first and select camera 2 API. Then go to the top where you can select face detection, this might be handy if you're filming a person. Timer is useful if you want to set up a shot, hit record and then come into the frame. Repeat, this is useful for taking repeated sets of photos. More camera options. Scroll to volume keys and you can assign a function to your phone's volume buttons. Scroll further down to lock video slash photo orientation, which is great for ensuring that the screen doesn't flip when recording and tilting the phone. That one can be really annoying. Scroll down further again to save location, which can be useful if you're editing your footage and trying to find a shot you took at a certain location. Right at the bottom is calibrate level angle, which you can use to calibrate the level ensuring your phone's horizon is always perfect. Go back and go into camera preview and scroll to show angle line, which will give you a line to show you how far off the horizon level you are. Click show free memory, show ISO, show histogram and select luminance. This will tell you if your image is blown out. Select focus peaking and put it on, which will highlight what is in focus. Show grid to help you frame your image. Come out and select on-screen GUI from the main selection. Here you can toggle on additional on-screen items so they're easier to turn on and off. I like selecting show face detection icon, show raw icon, show auto white balance lock icon, show auto exposure lock icon, show zoom slider control, multiple cameras icon, keep display on, force maximum brightness, the rest I leave on as they are. The reason why I'm selecting all of these is so I can have quick and easy access to these features without having to go into settings all the time and toggle them on and off. Go back and select video settings. Here you can select video resolution. Select video format. I use MPEG4 H.264, which is a really good format. Make sure record audio is selected so you have audio recording at the same time. If you are using an external microphone that is plugged into your phone, you can select it in the audio source. Video bitrate equals the higher the bitrate, the better the quality, but also the bigger the files. Video frame rate, 24 frames as we discussed earlier for most filming, or anything from 50 upwards for slow motion. The larger that number, the slower the clip can be reduced to. And that's most of the backend settings, the rest you can adjust on the camera mode. Here you can click on the three dots and then you can select what focus you want. Auto, locked, manual. You can adjust video resolution, speed, white balance, color effect and much more. Just before you go I want to leave you guys with some quick tips to help you with filming. One. 
be consistent with the orientation you're filming with. If you're creating something for YouTube, then I'd recommend filming horizontally. But if it's for Instagram or TikTok, then maybe vertically instead. It will get messy if you have to edit multiple clips at different orientations. 2. Resolution Pick the highest resolution for the best quality. However, if you don't have a lot of space on your phone, you can shoot at lower resolutions to save memory. 3. Film at sunrise and sunset for best lighting results. 4. Film slow-mo for epic shots, but make sure you use a lot of light or film in a well-lit place. 5. Use 24 frames a second for anything that isn't meant to be slow-mo or fast-moving action. 6. Correct exposure and white balance per shot to make sure the colours and white balance are correct. 7. Lock exposure and white balance to ensure that no massive lighting changes occur when filming. Nothing makes your footage look more like a phone than when it auto-corrects itself during a take. 8. Move closer to the subject you are filming rather than zooming in. When you zoom, you lose image quality. If you have to zoom, then use optical zoom rather than digital zoom. These are features that you can select on your device when choosing the camera. 9. Use grid lines to help you frame your shots. 10. Edit your footage, which is something that we're going to go over in another tutorial, so be sure to check that out. That's it for today. See you guys next time.